The Dolphin dynasty, according to all the signs, is emerging as the top story in professional football in 1972. Through 13 weeks, the Dolphin juggernaut has rolled through the NFL undefeated, untied, highly scoring, and hardly scored upon. And now in the last week of the regular season, only the decayed Baltimore Colts stood between the Dolphins and an historic, unprecedented 14th consecutive victory. Rick Weaver, Lou Quickburn, and Henry Barrow back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. It's cold and windy here this afternoon. We have a bit of a sore throat. We've had to close our glass window in front of us. Morris and Lee back deep down at the east end zone. Schleypack will kick off, and this ball game is about ready to get underway. Here he comes. He gets the toe into it. It's high. It is deep back into the end zone. Charlie Lee, a yard deep straight out. 5, 10, 15 to the 20. Cuts up the middle of the 36, a tackle, 35 to the 40, and he stumbles and falls down across the 40-yard line, or he would have gone 101 yards. Willie Franklin gets credit for the containment, but Charlie Lee almost busted one on the opening kickoff. He broke through the wedge, was hit a couple of times, bounced off tacklers, and perhaps jarred off balance because he stumbled as he crossed the 40 and was pounced upon at the 43. A magnificent return by Charlie Lee. The Dolphins offensively, Warfield and Twilley, the wide receivers, Morrill the quarterback, Morris and Zonker the running backs, Fleming the tight end, Evans and Moore are the tackles, Little and Kuchenberg the guards, Langer is the center. Third down and, he, and 12 for the Dolphins, the ball at the Colts' 47-yard line. Twilley splits far side, Warfield on the near side. Butch and Sundance are the split backs behind Morrill. Morrill drops to throw. Here's the pass. He swings it to Fleming. He's got it to 40, 35. He's bumped out of bounds on the far side of the field at the Colts' 33-yard line. Mar Fleming, the tight end, crossing over, caught the pass, wide open, and moves for a first down. The tackle by uh, Bruce Laird, now playing at one of the safety spots, and the middle linebacker, Mike Curtis. So uh, Earl Morrill, the AFC's leading passer going into uh, this week's ball game. Finally, he got enough completions and pass attempts thrown to be recognized. We have 11 minutes, 5 seconds to go in the first quarter. There is no score. Third down and 10. Dolphins from the Colts, 33. Morrill drops the throw, pumps once. Looks down uh, deep, and uh, the ball is, he dropped the ball as he it was going to pass the ball. The ball just slipped out of his hands. And then the next thing I knew, the ball is on the ground. He just dropped the ball and uh, recovered it, so the Dolphins will have to try a field goal here with uh, Yaprimian in. A 40-yard attempt, Morrow will hold. Garrow is 21 for 34 on the season, waiting for the snap. Waiting for the snap. Here it is. Kick is up. He's got the distance. It is good. The Premier gives the Dolphins the lead with a 40-yard field goal. 10 minutes and 39 seconds. Left to go in the first quarter. 57-yard drive. Nine plays. Dolphin football action continues from the Orange Bowl with a score. Our Dolphins three and the Colts nothing. The Dolphins defensively have uh, Den Herter, Fernandez, Hines, and Stanfield up front. Uh, Swift, Bonacani, and Bob Matheson at the linebackers. Foley and Johnson in the corners. Scott and Anderson are the safety. Dolphins could get only a 40-yard field goal on their first attempt from Garrow and lead 3 to nothing. but a good sustained ball control drive here engineered by Marty Domaris. Ball is placed down at the Miami 12. It'll be third down and five. Here's Domaris dropping back to throw. He's looking for the far corner. It is caught out of bounds. Incomplete. Eddie Hinton uh, went for the flag and they almost got a touchdown. Curtis Johnson, however, realized where the ball was being thrown and Hinton was out of bounds. Here, Rick Volk will hold. This will be a 20-yard attempt from the near side inbounds hash mark with 101 left to play in this first quarter. The Dolphins leading 3 to nothing. He makes it. He'll tie it up. Snap, set down. The kick is up. It is high enough, and it's uh, no good. Off to the uh, kicker's left. As I said, O'Brien is not having a good year, and uh, he misses a 20-yard attempt from practically straight out in front. The hash marks this year, as you know, do not make that much difference. And there is the gun. That's the end of the first quarter. Dolphins action continues from the Orange Bowl with a score. Our Dolphins three and the Colts nothing. And a third down and seven. The ball at the Dolphins 23-yard line as we begin the second period of play. Morrill up under center. Gets the snap. Drops the throw. Fires the middle. Twilly, 35, 40. And knocked down at the Dolphins 43, 44-yard line. A pickup of 21. On a strike, a slant over the middle from Morrill to Howard Twilly. And if they're going to key on your rushing game, why well, open them up with a pass? And that's what Earl uh, did just then as Twilly made the reception for the Dolphins. First down. First down, Dolphins from the Colts' 34-yard line. Earl Morrow up under center, waits for the snap. 
Long count, spins, hands off to Zonk. Quick hitter in the middle. He's got a hole. 25-20 down to the 19-yard line. Plus Larry Zonka. He almost picked up a first down single-handed, uh, Lee, but it's about a foot shy. The ball is at the Colts' 19-yard line. Second down, less than a yard. For the Dolphins at the Colts' 19. 11 minutes left to play in the first half. Dolphins lead 3-0 on a sustained march here. Warfield splits left to the near side. Twilly, Kick and Zonka remain the eye backs. Behind Morrow. Morrow spins, hands to Zonk, puts his head down, and booms his way for the first down, down to about the 17. He went over the left side that time, and Mercury Morris comes back in as Jim Kick goes out. The Dolphins pick up a first down. It'll be a third down coming up at about eight yards to go at the uh, Colts' 15-yard line. Nine minutes exactly left to play in the first half. On the snap, Morrow drops to throw. He's got time. He sets up and fires. It is intercepted. Down at the three-yard line by Laird. He's up the near sideline to the 10, the 15, across the 20, 25, hurdles the tackler, fumbles the ball, and the Dolphins recover it back at the 32-yard line. What a sequence that was. Morrow was just about to be clobbered as he released the ball. It was intercepted by safety Bruce Laird down at the three, ran it back up, got good blocking across the 30, was hit, and Howard Twilley recovers the fumble. And the Dolphins take it right back again at the uh, Baltimore 33-yard line. So it's a tug of war. Eight minutes, 13 seconds left to play in the first half. Dolphins lead 3 0. Dolphins have rushed for 57, needed 105 coming in, and the Colts giving it up grudgingly. Morris needed 95. He's got 27 unofficially. A second down and 10 for the Dolphins from the Colts' 33 yard line. Morrow, here's the quick pitch to Morris. Sweep to the near side, 30, 25, and knocked off his feet down at about the 16 yard line. And the Dolphins have a first down from the Colts' 21 as Morris rumbles for about 12 yards. Ball at the Colts' 21 yard line, a first and 10 for the Dolphins. As uh, I guess you could say ball control here, the pass interception gave the ball back to the Colts instantaneously, but they fumbled it back and uh, thwarted a long Dolphin drive. Now we're going again. Here's Morrow dropping the throw. He swings one out. It is caught by Morris. The 22, the 20, down to the 15, down to the 14-yard line. And the tackle on the play is made by Mike Curtis. Burke used as a pass receiver that time, and Kick comes in to replace him now. That uh, picked up about eight yards. It'll be a second down and two. Merck sure is attracting those blue jerseys out there today, Rick. Like he said a little while ago, looks like they're keying on him. They sure are. All right, the ball down at the Colts' 14-yard line. A second down and two. Dolphins uh, from that position. Six minutes, 33 seconds to go in the first half. Dolphins lead three zip. Trying to get in for six. Warfield splits to the far side till he comes to the near side. Zonka sets as a slot man right. Kick is the other back. Morrow drops back to throw. Fires the middle. Caught by Warfield. He's in for the touchdown. Warfield was hit and hit hard by Lonnie Hepburn at the one-yard line, but he spun off the tackle as he was leaping through the air to catch the ball, held onto it, and fell into the end zone for the TD. That for Morrow, who comes right back off an interception, is his 11th uh, touchdown pass. I think he, I said he had 12 interceptions before. He only has seven. And for Warfield, his third TD reception of the year. Gifanian will try the point from placement. Morrow will hold. Aguero kicks it up there. It's good. Dolphin football action. Continues from the Orange Bowl with a score on Dolphins 10, the Colts nothing. All right, uh, Eddie Hinton has come in uh, as the wide receiver, and O'Brien is out for the Colts. It'll be a third down and three at the Dolphins' 36-yard line. Waiting for the snap is Domerus. He hands off on a drop play. Here's Mitchell. He fumbles the ball, and Jake Scott picks it up for the Dolphins at the 30. Moves up the near side. He might go 40, 45, and he's knocked off his feet at the 50-yard line. As Scott runs that uh, recovered fumble back some 20 yards, the Dolphins have a first down at the midfield stripe with 3.35 left to go in the first half. Third down and nine. For the Dolphins from the Colts 49, Mar Fleming comes out, Jim Mandich in at tight end. Tick and Zonka remain the running backs. And Morrill drops back to throw, sets up, he fires across the middle, Warfield grabs a deflection at the 30-yard line, gets to about the 28 before he's tackled. That ball was touched by a couple of Colt defenders. Jerry Logan and Rick Volk had their hands on it, but Warfield standing in behind him, running his pass pattern, just grabbed the deflection and was tackled at the 28 after he caught the ball at the 30. That's good for a Dolphin first down. Second down and eight. Play uh, back in. Dolphins from the Colts 26. Play fake. Morrow back to throw. Fires the middle. Caught by Morris. Fumbles the ball. Inside the five. It's picked up by Laird at the three. He's out to the five. The 10, running laterally across the field, bounces off a tackler at the 15 and is knocked down at the 16-yard line. That pass 
was complete to Mercury Morris. He was hit hard at the five-yard line, fumbled the ball, and safety man Bruce Laird was guilty of a fumble off a similar situation a while ago himself, picked it up, and the Colts uh, return it out to their 16-yard line, so that Dolphins drive is stopped. First down, Dahmer stops straight back to throw, has good protection, fires the middle, it is caught by McCauley at the 30, 35, shakes the tackler inside the, across the 40-yard line, and gets out to about the Colts 44. The clock shows 134 left to go in this uh, first half. First down for Baltimore, the ball at their 44-yard line. The Colts have not scored on the Dolphins the last two, ga- two games that they played, including the AFC Championship game last year. Well, this Dolphin defense has done a, an excellent job on the Colts' offense over the last two and a half ball games almost. Domers drops back to throw, has time, fires out for the far side area. It is caught, and here's the pitch going to the trailing man, Lydell Mitchell. The pass was caught by O'Brien at the Dolphins' 45-yard line, and Mitchell coming downfield behind him. Took the lateral pass and picks up for additional yard. H down to the Dolphins 41 before Doug Swift ran him out of bounds. A minute and 25 seconds left to play in the first half. O'Brien splits to the far side. Haverlack to the near side. Waiting for the snap is Marty Darmus. Darmus quick step back to throw and he's going to have to eat it this time. The Dolphins are all over him back at about the 47 or 48 yard line. Manny Fernandez, Vern Denherter, Bill Stanfield, all three of them just smothered him back there and Damaris is shaken up on the play now he's getting up and limping back into the huddle they mark the ball back at the Miami 46 so it'll be a loss of five and our good friend Vern Denherter even took the ball out of Demaris's hand and started running with it he wanted to go ahead and try to score with that here ball. comes Unitas in the ball game as Damaris is going to the bench for some medical attention he is limping uh, rather prominently and uh, this could be Johnny Hughes final ball game as a pro. I think everybody's familiar with the problems that and the area of dissension uh, in which he has participated or has had uh, been forced to participate because he's been relegated to a backup role. So Johnny Yu, perhaps the greatest quarterback who ever lived, approaching 40, a man who is ranked as the greatest passer of all time in the National Football League, will get a shot against uh, his old coach, Don Shulip, as Domus is shaken up on that uh, last play, and Unitas is in to quarterback this football team. Uh, the Colts had called a timeout. The clock has stopped with a minute and 19 seconds. A second down and 15 situation prevails at the Dolphins' 46. One nineteen to go before the end of the half, and Miami leading by a score of 10 to nothing. All right, Unitas ready to go to work. He sends Haverlack in motion to the near side. Play fake, swings a screen out. It is caught by McCauley at the 50, looking for the blocking, and now he gets just inside the 45, down to the 44 before he's knocked down. Bonacani smelled that one out and just waited for the uh, for the receiver to come to him, and he did. They mark it at the 43, gain of three on the play. It'll be third down coming up, and some 12 yards to go as Unitas completes his first pass of the ball game, a screen. And now out of the huddle, he sends uh, O'Brien to the far side and Haverlack to the near side. A third down and 12. Coach ball from the Dolphins, 43. Johnny U, those quick little steps back. Dumps one off in the middle. It is intercepted by the Dolphins at the 35. And the man who got it is down immediately by the intended receiver, McCauley. And it is Doug Swift, the uh, strong side linebacker who was playing on this side of the field. That pass was dumped off in a hurry by Unitas. He got rid of the football, and Swift intercepted it. was down right there for the Dolphins at the 35. There is a timeout on the field. We'll keep it here. With 37 seconds left to play in this first half, the Dolphins lead 10 to nothing. Dolphins, unofficially, as we have the stats in our booth, still need 33 yards as a team to achieve a 105-yard total, which would then make them the number one rushing team in all of NFL history. Most importantly, the Dolphins requested a request for their 14th straight victory. That's the end of the first half. With the score, our Dolphins 10, the Colts nothing. Damaris is back in there now at quarterback. And we have uh, Nottingham, the human bowling ball, and Don McCauley at the running backs. Good ball control drive here. In this third quarter, the Dolphins lead 10 to nothing with the Colts on the move. The officials want to find where they want to mark it, and they set it down properly at the Dolphins 34. It'll be a third down and 12 coming up. 7.47 left to go in the third quarter. Dolphins lead 10 to nothing. He will drop the throw. Flags go down. Domeris pass picked off. Back at the 15 and the 20. The 25. It's Lloyd Mumford breaking for the near side of the 30. is caught from behind and thrown to the ground at the 33-yard line. 
Lloyd Mumford, the four-year man from Texas Southern, picked that one off back at the 15 on the far side. So the Dolphins get the interception by Mumford, and uh, we come up with field position at the 33. That is the for uh, Lloyd Mumford on the season. That uh, is his fourth interception, one of which he ran back for a touchdown. Now the Dolphins need just 24 yards rushing. Mercury needs some 55. No gain on the play, so we still need four yards as a team. Third down and seven at the Colts' 47-yard line. Jim Mandich has come in, and uh, he sets as a wide man off to the left side. Morrow drops back to throw. He's being pursued, and he's going to have to run with the ball now. He's straight ahead across the 45 down to about the 42-yard line, and that'll be about two yards shy of what they need for a first down. Ted Hendricks wrapped him up. But he was lucky to get out of there. Boy, that blocking piled up in front of him, and the Colts were coming, were really coming, and uh, so that'll bring up a field goal attempt situation. Well, is that the record? There's Dick Galler out there receiving the ball right now, I reckon. Isn't it classic that Earl Morrow, the old man, is the man that ran that additional yardage? Earl Morrill is the guy who picked it up, and that's how the Dolphins got it. Uh, Earl Morrill, uh, ironically, the uh, oldest man on the team, is the fellow who picked it up, and he got just enough yardage. And they needed four, as we mentioned, and they're putting it down at the 42, and Morrill is given credit for five yards, so they make it, and Morrill is the man who gets the record. Now, Yepremian is in to try a 50-yard field goal, as Morrill will hold toward the east end zone. Here's the snap set down, the kick is up. He's got the distance, and it's gone. Holy Toledo, Gary Carroll with a 50-yard field goal as Earl Morrow runs for the Nita Yardies, and the Dolphins now are the greatest rushing team in NFL history. He picked up five, and they needed four. We had to wait to see where they marked the football. So, Dolphin football action continues from the Orange Bowl with a score on Dolphins 13 and a Colts nothing. All right, the ball as the Colts will start from their 23-yard line with 3.46 left to go in the third quarter. Dolphins leading 13 to nothing. The ball at the Colts' 23-yard line. McCauley and Mitchell are the running backs. O'Brien goes in motion off to the far side. Dropping back to throw is Damaris. He sets up. He fires for the near side. It is caught by Haberlach. Shakes a tackle at the 45 and is run out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Here's the pass. It is intercepted as Damaris was attempting to hit on a slant out down the near side, he was attempting to hit McCauley, and he threw the ball right into the hands of the Dolphin quarterback, Curtis Johnson. And Johnson uh, fell on the ground with it, did not uh, get up and attempt to run with it, so the Dolphins again intercept Domers and have the ball at the Miami 44-yard line. That's the end of the third quarter. Dolphin football action will continue from the Orange Bowl with the score on our Dolphins 13 and the Colts nothing. Otto Stowe is in the ball game at a wide receiver. Dolphins uh, have... Mandich also split out wide from the uh, 28 and a half yard line in Colts territory on third and nine. Morrow having trouble getting the ball away, throws a pass out to Morris down the near side and it's incomplete. They put on a tremendous rush that time as everybody was coming and so it'll bring up a fourth down situation and Gerrall who has kicked a couple of field goals of 40 and 50 yards is back in there to try another one down here at the west end zone now. The big record, of course, the Dolphins are going for was uh, is the 14-0, becoming the first team to go through an NFL season unbeaten with 14-game schedule. And uh, right now they're in very much in command to get this accomplished. This is a 35-yard attempt. Snap set down. The kick is up. He's got the distance, and it's perfect again. You're plenty in three for three this afternoon on field goals of 40. 50 and uh, about 36 yards that time. Dolphin football action will continue from the Orange Bowl with the score are Dolphins 16 and the Colts nothing. The Dolphins defense now is working on its third shutout of the season and its third consecutive shutout against the Baltimore Colts team. Henry? Dolphin managing partner Joe Robbie has come down onto the sideline now to share in the excitement that's going on down here among the players. And believe me, Rick, this unexcitable team is excited. <laughs> Dolphin defense has been the story of this ball game. Of course, the big story, and they've had to grind it out, was uh, the new offensive total rushing record, and Earl Morrow ran for that in the third quarter. But uh, now Greasy is going to come in. Here he comes. And you can hear the crowd reaction in the background. The white handkerchiefs come out. This is his first appearance in nine weeks since he was carried off the field on a stretcher 
And Earl Morrow comes out, and he deserves a tremendous round of applause. We see the fans are welcoming him back and also showing their appreciation to Earl Morrow. The ball at the Miami 33-yard line. 6-16 to go. The fans pick up the chance. Willian Stowe splits to the near side of the field. Morris and Zonka, the eye backs. Here's the handoff to Mercury through a hole on the left side. Dragging tacklers with him. And he gets only a couple up across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Ray May, the right side linebacker, makes the tackle on the play. And Morris is shaken up. Henry? That's what I was going to tell you, Rick. Mercury is hard. Slow getting up. And they're going to have a rough time getting him out unless it's... Uh, because he does not want to come out, and now he's being assisted off the field and gets a, a round of applause. If there's any way to get him back in there, you better believe he'll be back in. The ball is placed down at the 36-yard line. He's got three yards. Jim Kick comes in to replace him as he's assisted off the field. Five minutes and 51 seconds left to go in this football game. The Dolphins lead 16-0 in second and seven. The ball at the Miami 36. Greasy drops the throw, fires the middle. It is caught by Stowe. He's got the first down across the 50 in the Colts territory at the 49-yard line. Otto Stowe and a slant over the middle. He was hit very hard by Hepburn, but held on to the ball, and the Dolphins pick up the first down. Maintained possession at the Colts 49-yard line. All right, that brings up a third down and 13 situation, and now kick starts into the ball game and is called back to the sideline. Mercury Morris unofficially needs 16 yards to enter the 1,000-yard club, and time is really becoming a factor. 3.55 to go. Here's Greasy. Quick out, and they thrown in behind. Swilly, the intended receiver, as he was breaking in, and uh, Greasy threw the ball in behind him. That brings up a fourth down, and Larry Seiple comes in. And uh, I'll tell you, Lou, if Merck gets these 16 yards and gets uh, the 95 he needed coming into the ball game, he will have earned them because they have had everybody... But uh, the water boy over there after him this afternoon, Seiple, stands back at the 33. Here's the snap. They put on a good rush. He gets off a wobbly end over end kick. Not too long. Bounces down and out of bounds at the Colts 26-yard line. So it's up to the Dolphin defense to get the ball back now if uh, Mercury's going to have another shot at it. Gives them a minute to rest up that ankle on the sidelines. And the Colts will begin operations from their 26. They are being shut out. For the third consecutive time, including the AFC Championship game last year by this Miami team. On third and ten, Dahmer swings the screen out. Caught by Mitchell at the 25. They better get him and run him out of bounds, and they did just that at the 30-yard line. So that is shy of what they needed for a first down. And so the Colts fail to move it again, as they have all afternoon. Their offense has been rather pathetic, and so David Lee comes in to punt. He will kick to Jake Scott. And Dick Anderson is the shallow man, and three minutes and 11 seconds remain, and perhaps Merck will get another test here for 16 yards. Here's the snap to Lee. He punts it out of there, gets off a booming spiral. Scott will grab the football for the Dolphins at the 29, gets a block from Anderson, and is almost beheaded at the 30-yard line. And maybe he got out to the 31. So here come the Dolphins' offensive unit on now, and Gracie will remain the quarterback. Henry? The offensive line has told Merck that they'll make the holes for him. All right, you heard Henry. He's right down behind the Dolphins bench, and the, uh, the offensive line has told Merck that they will make the holes for him. He needs 16 yards. Morris and Kick will be the running backs. The ball is just across the 30. We'll call it the Dolphins 31. Two minutes, 56 seconds remain. Dolphins lead 16-0. Fully splits right. Greasy the quarterback with, with the Kick and Morris as the splitbacks. First down Miami from the 31. On the snap. Here's the handoff to Morris. Starts outside, turns the corner. 30, 35. But he's knocked off his feet and it tripped up just as he was about to break in the open up at about the 37 yard line. Unofficially, that's a gain of six yards, so Merck needs just 10 more. Perhaps a half yard more than that. And it's right around the 10 yard figure, and the fans are picking up the chant, listening on their transistors. Mercury Morris unofficially needs just 10 more yards to enter the 1,000 yard club and join Larry Zonka as the only two backs in NFL history to have a thousand yards on the same team. From the Dolphins 37 yard line, Greasy drops the throw, he's firing a pass out, it's caught by Otto Stell, he's uh, knocked down at the 41 and that should be good enough for a first down. And that will be the two minute warning also as Dolphin football action will continue in one minute. The score are Dolphins 16 and a Colts nothing. A minute and 56 seconds to play. Bob Greasy is the quarterback, and uh, the backs are in an eye. 
He spins hands to Morris, and he is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten a yard out to the 42-yard line. He hit the left side and slipped again. He has slipped numerous times. Roy Hilton, the defensive end, makes the tackle, and Mercury is shaken up again on the play, Henry. It's that same ankle that they were working on before that's bothering Mercury. And, Rick, it, nobody landed on it. It looked like he hurt it when he slipped. Well, it, it, is, it is too bad that uh, the, the turf has to enter into something like this. But uh, Charlie Lee will come in and replace him. One minute and 45 seconds uh, left to go in the ball game. Jim Kick and Charlie Lee are the Dolphins running backs now. Miami with a second and 10 from the 41-yard line. Here's the handoff. Going to kick over the left side, and he bounces his way out to about the 44-yard line before middle linebacker Mike Curtis and quarterback Lonnie Hepburn make the tackle on the play. The ball is placed down at the Dolphins 45. It'll be a third down and seven. And here's a handoff to Charlie Lee over the right side, and he gets to the Dolphins 49, and that's all. The ball at the Miami 48-yard line, and uh, the coach call a timeout with 41 seconds showing on the clock, and it'll be a, just a dirty shame if uh, Merck uh, on the ankle I don't know what the factor is. He's been battling an ankle uh, all season long. He's been slipping all afternoon on this wet poly turf, and to be denied by just 9 or 10 yards is, is going to be tough to take. But as, as Lou Creekmer aptly pointed out, Don Shula has to think about getting his ball club in uh, perfect physical condition or as perfect as possible for the playoffs because after this game, a brand-new season begins next week, and if you lose one, that's it. 14-0 doesn't... Uh, Make a bit of difference in the playoff. Here's the snap. He gets the kick out of there, and he booms a long, high kick. Bounces down inside the 11, and is going to be down by Larry Ball, the Dolphins' specialty team, at about the seven-yard line. So the Colts, with 31 seconds to go, will have the football at their seven-yard line. 12 seconds left to play, and then they have a third down in one situation. If the Dolphins could hold them here and force a punt, uh, who knows? What would happen? Here's a quick in. They finally find Tom Mitchell, the tight end, up to the 25-yard line. But uh, even though it's a first down, let's see if they're going to get the, the clock stopped. And the Colts use up their final timeout and stop the clock with six seconds. All right, Domrus, last play of the game, scrambling around, loses the ball. It's picked up by the Dolphins and uh, still loose. Who's got it? Den Herder down at the one-yard line. Vern Den Herder, they uh, took the ball away from Domrus, and he almost got in for a touchdown. Down at the one-yard line, as the gun sounds, the season ends, the ball game ends on a wild scrambling note. The Dolphins move into the Hall of Fame. The final score, the Dolphins 16, the Colts nothing. Money out there last July, out Biscayne College, did you ever figure that you had this kind of offensive line there when you put them all together? Well, right from the beginning, when I first came here, I, we started talking about pride. But we said at that time that our pride had to be based on accomplishment. And that we should set to work at that time to get accomplishment. And I think this, this is why this is so meaningful to us, because it's, it, it does go into record books, an all-time record. And what else could better show our accomplishment than such a record? And that's why I'm so proud of each one of them. Even though they gave me the game ball, I've already talked to Mr. Robbie, and he's assured me that there's He's be gl glad to have each one of them have one, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get him each a game ball. I just want to congratulate Earl on the greatest season of his career. Thank you, Lou. Uh, it, it has been the greatest uh, season of my career, uh, the way everything has worked out, uh, the way the team has just kept rolling. And uh, these runners, everybody just doing a tremendous job all the way through. And uh, it's just great to be a part of uh, a team like this. Earl, you're the man that carried the ball for the uh, yardage, breaking the yardage mark today. You realize this? Well, I, I realized that when the crowd went wild, uh, there, were, there was no thoughts about it when I started out. I was back there to pass and uh, got some pressure, and, uh, and I rolled, uh, rolled away from a tackle and uh, almost fumbled the ball and uh, took off and made, I think, three or four yards. Not enough for first down, but it was enough to, to put us over the all-time team rushing record. Not from, don't get me in there. I didn't, didn't do that much rushing all year. <laughs> Earl, we've talked about what a great assemblage of football players Don Shula has put here today and or this year. And you've seen some great football teams in your career. How do you judge this team? How would you put them up there? Oh, I'd say uh, they're the best, really, uh, uh, being a part of them and everything. Uh, just the way they work, uh, with the confidence and uh, 
just keep that running game going, everybody just working very smoothly and, and keeping our mistakes to a minimum. This is what I'd have to say. Uh, just the job that they did uh, all year. They're, they're right up there uh, at the top of uh, any of the teams I've seen. Well, Earl, congratulations again, and I'm sure you're looking forward to next weekend. It's true, Lou. Uh, from now on, every game is uh, sudden death, and uh, we got to be at our best, and they got to be fired up, and this is the way we'll play it from here on out. All Miami's looking for to be in that Super Bowl. You know it, Earl. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. Uh, that's what we're uh, looking for, too. We want to get there. Shula and assistants Arn Sparger, Clark, Keens, Gary, and Tassif coached a team that ranked number one in offense and defense in the NFL. Their perfect season was even more impressive because they accomplished it without their regular quarterback. However, Earl Morrow succeeded Greasy as leading passer in the conference and was named All-Pro. As good as Morrow was, no one can completely replace a Bob Greasy, whose strong arm and quick feet run enemy defenses ragged. The Dolphins' rushing record was nothing less than a personal tribute to Miami's fine offensive line of Jim Langer, Norm Evans, Doug Crusan, Wayne Moore, and Bob Kuchenberg. Their leader was all-pro Larry Little, number 66, a human side, famous for cutting down cornerbacks. For the second straight season, Little was voted best offensive lineman in the American Conference. Shula's concept of a three-back offense brought a new dimension to the Miami attack. With Zonka's power, Kick's clutch, and the specter of Mercury's speed, they were the most prolific infantry in the annals of the pro game. They were also teammates in the truest sense, making the key block and cheering the others from the sideline. 